So on occasion here in Holy Family, we watch movies, and I've had the unfortunate experience of being present for a few romantic comedies which are horrific and are based usually on the idea of some very, very attractive girl who doesn't realise that she's pretty at all and some nerdy guy who end up kind of sitting together on a bus and staring into each other's eyes and discovering, oh my goodness, I think I'm in love, and then they get separated by some strange circumstance and yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. And, uh, but the interesting thing is this kind of key moment that they always, that they always uh, focus in on, right? It's the gaze, the gaze, right? Staring into the other person's eyes and then you suddenly realize, I'm in love, <laughs> whatever that means. Um, but they just, it's, it's this moment where they look into the other person's eyes and, 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 and something happens, this, this spark or this click or this kind of realization that you can't really put into words, even though many songs for many, many centuries have tried. Uh, can't really put into words what it is, but just something, just something has happened. Something is now different. And something is now different which will motivate me to behave differently. I'm now going to start thinking about this girl and trying to kind of arrange to see her again and maybe go to war because I'm conscripted. I'll have this little picture of her in my fighter plane or whatever it is. And, and I'll be motivated to, to survive and get back because of her. It's very, very interesting what love does to a human heart. It can completely, completely change us. A lot of uh, the lads now I would have gone to college with uh, we socialized as one does uh, in one's late teens, early 20s. But when they, when they got married, they changed. They were no fun anymore. And then once they got married and had kids, then they completely changed. Because then not only were they uh, obviously uh, had to live their lives thinking of someone else, they now had to, had to be responsible. They now had to really think of someone, not, not just like the, you know, where we go on our holidays, but where can we go that's child friendly and child safe and, and babysitters and all that, everything, everything. So much change, they completely changed once, once, once love was introduced to their lives. And then I think, I think the real change that happens when you have kids, when you have children, isn't just isn't it great that there are little people running around that look just like my wife or whatever, but I think it's actually the, the self-sacrifice involved. Now that you've brought another life into the world, your hobbies really need to be taken second place or fifth or sixth place, if they even feature at all. And, and every, what you do in your free time, what you do in the weekends, uh, how much sleep you get will never ever be the same again. <laughs> you know, because a, a life has now been brought into the world, that's your responsibility. And now love isn't just this kind of gooey gaze anymore but now it's now it's self-sacrifice and so now love has taken on a whole new meaning once once children are brought into the mix so it's very interesting when we read today's gospel anyone who prefers father or mother to me is not worthy of me anyone who prefers son or daughter to me is not worthy of me very interesting because one would imagine, sure, I mean, sorry, is Jesus saying that we're not supposed to love people or, what's, or, or what? Like, because if he's a God of love, then, then surely we're supposed to love, aren't we? Are we supposed to love? How does this work? You see, it's, it's very clear from what the Lord asks of us that we are called to love everyone, but that love has priorities. As in, so we're called to love everyone without exception. Those obviously in our family, uh, those who hate us, those from our neighborhood, those from across the river. We are called to love everyone. But within that, our love has to have priorities. It has to. And that might sound like a contradiction in terms, but surely love is love. I won't go there. Uh, surely love, love is all the same. It's, it's actually not. There, there, there is a difference within love. As in, if, if you're a married man, your first priority is what? Your first love has to be what? God. God. Above your own family. So if your wife doesn't like the fact that you go to Mass, you say, love, we'll talk about it later. I'm listening to your opinion. I am listening to you. But I'm going to Mass. And vice versa, of course, if a wife wants to go to Mass and the husband doesn't like it. Uh, it this, my, my first priority, my first love must be God. 
then wife, then kids, then everybody else, then friends and, 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 and whoever else uh, features in there. But that's, like, that's, that's a very important reality, especially today now that uh, being a practicing Catholic is going to be less and less politically correct and less and less popular. We're going to find that this, this priority of loves is going to be tested. Because if your family don't like that you go to Mass, if your parents, this is actually happening today, that parents are saying, why are you, my 10-year-old child, going to Mass? Was it them nuns that you met that time at some camp or something? Why are you going? Why? I actually, I remember I, I was back home in my own town, my hometown, and I was talking to the choir director, right, uh, from the, the cathedral. And I haven't seen him in plus, must be 20 years. Like, and I said, how are things going? Because like the, the choir, the folk group is still going, or was before pre-COVID. Uh, and I said, so how are things going? And he said, good, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, things have changed, though. And I said, well, how, how is that? He said, it's, it's really strange now that teenagers are coming to me. So they're, like, they're all 15, 16 in the choir, maybe more. They're coming to me saying, uh, yeah, sorry, I was just late for, for practice there. I had a bit of trouble getting away from home. And, I, you know, you're kind of saying, sorry, what, what do you mean you have a bit of trouble getting away from home? And he said, yeah, I was just a bit of a run-in with the mother. She said, um, she said, are you going to defy me by going to Mass? Are you going to disobey me by going to Mass? My, how things have changed. So now the child has to kind of, it's, it's, it's sad, like as a 15, 16 year old, you have to kind of learn this lesson already, that my first priority is, is God. You know, if, if, it's, if it's a competition between God and my parents, well actually it's God who, it's God who wins, because he must be, must be my first priority. So children, a lot of kids these days have to actually defy their parents in order to practice their faith. It's, it's crazy, but that's, that's the way things are going. So, Yes, we are called to love everyone, but our love has priorities. God is first. If you're a young person, next is your parents, then brothers and sisters, superiors, whoever they may be. But our, our love must, it must have priorities. Because you can think of maybe like a, a firefighter or a policeman, doctor, surgeon, anything. And uh, they put everything they have into their career. And, and they're, they're doing good work. They're out there saving lives as a, you know, a guard. You're out there reducing the crime rate and putting the bad guys behind bars. And as a fireman, you're saving people and cats and the whole lot. And um, as a doctor, you're, you're saving lives. But if, if that begins to, to take over everything, my wife becomes a stranger. My kids know their childminder way better than they know me. And even though I may have saved lives, I haven't done what God asked me to do. Which is, along with saved lives, honour and treasure this woman that I have entrusted to you and be an example of fatherly love, so of, of the, the love of the Divine Father for these children that I have entrusted to your care. That's your priority. Then comes your career. So like, our love must have priorities. It has to. It has to. I have to love the my colleagues at work, but never more than my wife, never more than my kids. So our, we love everyone, but with priorities. And the first priority is God. So when we, when we understand that, then anyone who prefers father or mother to me is not worthy of me. He's not saying don't love your parents, but he's saying love God even above them. One of our sisters, uh, she visited uh, our community, our mother house in Slovakia. She loved it and she said, this is it. This is where I want to go. And her parents said, no, it isn't. And she said, yes, it is. So she went to her bed and snuck out the window. <laughs> and she got to the mother house late at night because uh, she got a lift from someone after sneaking out of her house. So loving God above her parents. I'm not recommending people do this on a regular basis, but if it's a choice between loving God and loving my parents, God comes first. God comes first. He must. He has to. So, as we think of the love that God has for each one of us, we think of that, that gaze that rests upon each one of us. We think of that profound desire that the Lord has for each one of us. And that not only emotive response, but there should be some sort of a, an emotive response, an emotional response in there as well. 
when you look at someone who know who you know loves you and you, 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 you see them and you look at them in the eye and you know you know that you're loved I don't know but Eva gives me two reactions one is this is absolutely amazing and it's just so incredible to feel loved that someone actually someone actually someone actually knows me and they, and they still love me <laughs> and secondly I think it makes you feel very vulnerable because now if I love them back I give them some of my heart if I love them properly if they're my wife I give her all of my heart I place my hand my heart in her hands and now it makes me vulnerable now you imagine the love of God for each one of us who loves us infinitely gives us his sacred heart knowing that some won't even respect his name that some won't listen to him that some will not care that some will actually blame him as soon as anything goes wrong the Lord has put everything on the line for love of us and in return what does he ask he asks for our love which really isn't that hard it should not be hard to love God if we know him at all if we've any inkling at all of who he is and how he is he really is not hard to love So in a special way, we ask our Blessed Lady to teach us what the heart of her son is like. Teach us who he is and teach us how to love him as he deserves to be loved. Amen.